right, guys. We're here at Camden One in Milan, Illinois. We're going to go over this craft's newest addition to their mid-ranges, and that's going to be the sole. We're going to throw it a few times. We're going to kind of approach with it. We're going to compare it to its closest relative, the Comet, and uh, we're going to see whether or not this uh, disc makes it in my bag. So do me a favor. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you like what I'm doing, please hit that like button. And comment down below what's your favorite understable mid-range and why and how and what shot do you actually like to use it for. So let's get to it and uh, let's see how these guys fly. Okay, guys. Let's talk about the flight numbers for the Soul. First, you're going to start off with a speed 4, then you have a glide of 5, followed by a turn of negative 3, and then a fade of 0, which equals a disc craft stability rating of negative 0.5, which means for an average person, this is going to fly slightly understable. All right, let's take a look at these two compared. All right, so here's the Comet, here's the Soul. You can tell there's a drastic difference in the flight plate. And this looks a little bit flatter and this looks a little bit domier, but uh, this the Comet here has a bead right here versus the sole has no bead at all. And if you look at the difference in ridden width, right, this is slightly, slightly bigger, not much, than this one. And this is deeper than the sole. So ultimately that should be the case. You can tell this is a speed faster than this. All right, so let's see how this flies. Here, I'm gonna be driving the Soul first, and then I'm gonna be driving the Comet. As you can see, I'm doing the same format as I did for the Luna. I'm gonna drive it a few times, measure it, and get the average distance and post it up here for you. Now, there, I want to note that there was a significant tailwind about 16 miles per hour today when I was driving. So, as you can see, it's still understable even in a good tailwind. Okay guys, next I'm going to approach with the Sol and the Comet. I'm going to stand about 150 foot away and I'm just going to throw a couple approach shots to it so you can see how the disc flies as it's in the air and how accurate you can get. Alright guys, as you can see, I put the Sol through a similar test as I did the Luna. I drove with it a couple times, I approached with it, the only thing I didn't do was putt with it because these aren't putters, these are mid-ranges. So, my initial reaction to this, and is it gonna go into my bag? So first, let's go over my initial reaction. With it. I kinda had a lot of fun with this disc. It was kinda funny in how, like, even at 50% power, that if I put it up on an angle, or released at an angle like this, it would flip up the straight, still flex the right a little bit, but then have that nice, kind of soft, late fade uh, at the end. But this is a pretty significant angle to be putting it on. And I had a, granted, I had a significant tailwind today, but the only other disc in my bag that I put on an angle like this and get it to flip up and then hold the ante or, or have an ante and then finish to the left like that is my flex heat. And that is typically my big ante disc because I don't have a forehand just yet. I'm still working on it, still trying to build up the muscle to, to put it out 350. Uh, 3 to 350 instead of maybe 150 to 200. So, you know, that's what I use the heat for. And this kind of flies exactly like that. It reminds me of it. Uh, 50 to 75 percent power is all I had to throw out today to get to give me that flex, to give me that ante uh, line that I was looking for. Uh, some of the the kind of the shots that I would use this on would be hole 16 in Cam 1 in Milan, Illinois. It's a big uphill ante shot or big uphill flick shot. That's maybe 250. And uh, because I don't have the flex, or the, not the flick or the flex, uh, because I don't have a forehand, I will typically, you know, take a heat or take my archer or take my comet or my buzz and put it on an anti line. It just kind of lightly loft it up there. Uh, this, on the other hand, I can put very little power on it and get it, get it to throw it straight, have it maybe clear the woods a little bit more, and then it would fade uh, to the right a little bit or flex to the right a little bit, and then finish at the hole. 
So this is probably be a disc I would try out on that uh, on that hole moving forward. Now, who do I recommend this disc for? Well, I would recommend this disc for beginner disc golfers, right? Guys and girls who are just getting into disc golf who probably don't have the perfect form or no or have any form at all and just kind of know how to throw maybe their dog's uh, disc or, or something like that, uh, this would be a great disc for you. This would fly kind of like a buzz flies for me right now. I, I It would fly kind of straight and it had that soft fade. Maybe if you put a little bit more power on it, it would fly straight, flex to the right just a little bit, and then fade to the left. That's what my buzz is currently doing right now, and that's what my wasp would do right now. So I think this is a good beginner disc that would be a good introduction or, or at least introduce you to kind of how a buzz flies. Now with an intermediate player, somebody who's been throwing for a while, who maybe have a little bit better form than a beginner, this disc would be a great anti-disc for you. This disc will fly straight for you, maybe have that fade to the right or flex to the right there, and it fades softly. For me, it almost wanted to turn over into a roller. And again, this flies like my flex heat. So I'd probably use this for those shots too, where maybe I don't need the 350 to 400 or 300 to 350 uh, flip to high, uh, hyzer flip to flat to, to flexing ante and finishing at the basket. You know, maybe I could use that 200, 250, maybe even 100 hole, you know, 100 foot hole where it's the same shot, but the heat's just too much for it or too, too fast for it. And I have to figure out kind of what to throw. So this might be able to fill that that gap for me. Now, will it replace my Comet or make it in my bag? I think during my casual rounds, or at least during my uh, you know practice rounds and and all that stuff, I will probably bag this a little bit more to try to see you know what I can use it for and how I could use the disc and maybe get a little bit more comfortable with it. But right now, for my tournaments, I'm still gonna bag the Comet because I like how the Comet flies. It flies a lot like um, my Buzz does when I put you know a lot of power on it. The same power that I put on this at the 50 to, to 75% range, this will flip up the flat. This will flex to the right just a little bit and then it'll have a nice soft fade at the end. So this is what this disc is for for me. This right here is just a little too too uh, flippy for me uh, for those kind of shots all right guys that's my review of the soul if you like what i'm doing here please hit that like button if you're new here hit that subscribe button don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when i upload my next video and don't forget down in the comment section below please let me know what your favorite understable mid-range is what kind of shots you like to use it for and also why is it your favorite thank you guys and remember one throw at a time one round at a time